I've noticed in my own uh, visions of the Common Core in the last couple of years that there are some schools where there's been a large number of high school students opting out. I, I recall uh, Trumbull had a huge number. And uh, uh, is that is that you said only two you met from one school, but the numbers, like you said, also are increasing. Um, is Connecticut any different than the other states that you know about, or is it about the same all over? Connecticut in the opt-out revolution is waking up. Uh, Madison, 93%. Danbury, I think it was 84%. Uh, we've got opt-out students all across the way. My first day was just in a very rural community, a very small school, but students are opting out. I, when I get to New York, I'm going to Long Island. That is the opt-out capital of the nation. In, in New York, over 200,000 students have opted out. The city is freaked out. They don't know what to do. Because when you opt out of the test, what happens is the testing company doesn't get paid. Now, I'll give you an example of how this pay works. And this is the actual truth. If I'm giving a student uh, the SBAC in Connecticut or one of the, the, the park tests in, in New York, uh, that would be a Common Core related test. What happens if the student vomits on that test? What I do, teachers are instructed to take out a pair of plastic gloves, put on the latex gloves, clean off the vomit, put the test in an envelope, and mail it into the testing company. Now you say, what's the purpose of that? You see, they're not gonna score that test, but the fact that it's in an envelope, a student's name is on it, and it goes to them, bang, $65 in the bank. That's what they don't care whether our kids get sick, all they care about is they get paid. The opt-out movement is the most, uh, most threatening movement to the corporate uh, uh, deformers. I don't like to call them reformers, because after 13 years, you don't have the right to call yourself a reformer. So those people, see our kids as their profits, and they don't care if they vomit on the test. I dedicated my, my first day's walk to Ethan Pratt Rudisiski from Florida. Ethan was a kid with uh, cerebral palsy and a number of other uh, uh, cognitive issues, and Ethan was dying. He was in hospice care, and the commissioner of education in Florida insisted, sent someone to test him in hospice care. His, his mother, Andrea, the doctors, the nurses, the, the homebound teacher crying in tears trying to stop them from doing this. There's something wrong in this country when we're saying that we need to test kids in hospitals and even on their dying beds. Something is seriously wrong. And, and I say that commissioner of education in Florida should have been fired. She should have been forced to resign. And anyone who thinks that it's okay to wipe the vomit off a test and, and put it in an envelope and send it to the test company, they should be arrested, they should be incarcerated. If, I, if I'm an ass assessment is my area, I'm a clinician, I test children. If you get sick during an assessment, I don't care about the test, it's in the trash. I focus on you, I take care of you, and you know what, I will not give you that assessment again. Even, even if it wasn't the assessment, I have too many ways to find out uh, how to help you. I don't need any tests. So if you vomit to an assessment, that is data that says this test has made this child sick. And it's shame on anyone who's chasing our children into hospitals, uh, psychiatric hospitals, chasing them into hospice care. Th this, this is the most immoral crime ever committed against a child. It's child abuse. So I'm walking and I'm talking and I'm fighting and I'm standing up for all of those kids. How do you walking, man? All right. Walking all the way. <laughs> DC.